Hey you guys, how you doing? It's Ken Tech here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over some um, security questions because someone got a job re job interview recently for a cybersecurity, cybersecurity analyst role and I have the job description right here. And I just want to go over some questions you may be asked if you're doing a cybersecurity job interview. Obviously, if you're new, make sure you know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. All right. So... It says on the and um I'll share the description somewhere here in the in the video so you guys could see what I'm talking about. Put it somewhere as a screenshot. But uh one of the questions you'll be asked is about data loss prevention, which is DLP. And um I have experience with DLP. I'm not sure if you guys ever use Microsoft Pre Preview. Um I'm I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly, but I use my Microsoft Review and I use Google Workspace for our DLP. So if a hiring manager asks me about that, I would I would just say I, I have it set up with DL I have DLP set up at Google Workspace and it's set up where certain things are confidential and certain things are restricted. So for example, like I had it configured where if you send a document to someone that is not your organization, it would actually give you a warning and it won't let you send the document. It says, are you sure do you want to allow this document to be sent to that person? Um, so I had I had it configured that way and I had it conf I had DLP configured with social security numbers, with pass with passport numbers, and also with credit card transactions. So I would get an alert anytime someone puts any sensitive information, whether it's a credit card, uh debit card passport social security number i would get alerts about that on from the admin side of things i had that all configured on my end so they asked me about with my dlp experience i would talk about that so that was one of the questions um, i got i got i don't jump into before and i got asked about dlp but at, at the time i didn't know about that but i would have experience i actually seen it and done it before so that'll be one of the questions they'll ask you to ask you about um edrs and my experience with ADR is Microsoft Defender. So I use Microsoft Defenders for alerts. Sometimes you get false positives. Sometimes you get um, alerts that make no sense where uh, a, guy, a guy is in New York and then he's using a VPN. Now he's somewhere else. You get an alert about that. So obviously as you, when you set up your, your solutions for EDR, um, you want to make sure that it's tweaked and set up correctly because there is a such thing as getting a lot of false positives. So you get things that make no sense. So you want to make sure that your EDR is set up correctly. As far as SIM solutions, I use Microsoft Sentinel and I actually connect the Sentinel with, with Microsoft Defender for XDR and I put them together and I actually configure them and I set it up in a way that it sends me tickets and alerts to my um, fresh, desk, fresh Desk ticketing system. So you could set it up doing that way, and also you could set up you could set up and look at queries and stuff like that. So you have to have experience with queries, and um, that was like one of the questions that I was actually asking the job interview myself. So that's probably a question they'll probably ask you. As far as uh, looking at logs is concerned, like do you have experience with looking at logs? So you have to know how to look at logs, and that that's like like miscellaneous things from like from event viewer, like you have to know how to look at logs from the event viewer, the event ID and stuff like that. All that is actually important when it comes to getting a job in cybersecurity. You should know how to do that. You should know how to look at the basic logs. And also you should know how to look at alerts and logs in in your um, EDR solution. Uh, in my in my job, we look we look at logs at CrowdStrike. So I look at CrowdStrike logs um, and I look at logs at ThreatLocker. So those are the things that I look at. So I'll probably talk about that if I if I actually had a job interview, and and I'm still I'm looking at the like I have my screens up there. I'm looking at the job description, and it says work closely with the team to investigate and manage security posture things like that. So you have to make sure that you you have documentation for everything. Like oh, what happens if you get malware? How do you handle ransomware? Um, how do you handle an incident that just happened? Who do you who are the who are the people you talk to first if if uh if someone gets get someone gets malware or or God forbid ransomware who are the first people you talk about how is the business being handled who are the vendors that you need to talk to or who are the people that you work with that need to know about that information and how do you handle something like ransomware in your work environment and 
who should know, who shouldn't know. How do you talk about it with the executives? How do you do it in a non-tech way? Because those guys are not tech savvy. So you have to explain to them, okay, we just got we just got ransomware on our systems and we're in trouble, blah, blah, blah. She so should know how to how to be super non-technical with that as possible. That's why like I say, like, you go to like some conference events, they do tabletop exercises, they go over certain things. If an incident happens, how do you handle it? If you work in a financial firm, things like that. Those things are very important. So just to think about that. And it says conduct endpoint network forensic, network forensic investigations to determine the root cause of impact. Like I said, sometimes you get alerts on your endpoints that make no sense. It's because it's not tweaked correctly because your 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 EDR solution. So you want to make sure that it's tweaked correctly. That's why you get a lot of false positives. You get like like um, uh, initial travel access, like travel alerts, where oh this guy was was in New York. Now he's in Italy all of a sudden. And you get a, an alert about that. And then you have to call the customer. Oh, was that you? And the customer says, yeah, I just, <laughs> I'm a sales associate or I'm a, not sales associate, but I'm a, I'm a tech sales guy and I'm traveling right now. So that alert is normal, you know, or you get an alert in, in, in CrowdStrike that the user uh, accidentally mistyped their password and then you have to reach out to the customer and let them know, oh, was that you or was that some random Joe Schmo? And they're like, no, that was me. Okay. And you could just mark that ticket as, okay, this person mistyped their password by accident. It's just a random, it's just, it's just them doing it by accident. So you could just, you could just like forget about this alert or ignore the alert, but you want to make sure you, you write everything down, right? It's very important. Um, and obviously part of EDR solutions, part of endpoints is also doing patch management. Are you doing patch management in your company? Um, how do you how do you handle things that happen through incident response? Do you have a playbook set up in your work environment? The playbooks basically is like, you know, how you set how do you handle something from point A to Z if it's something God forbid something bad happens, things like that. And I'm not gonna go in depth with 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 um playbooks, but those are things that you'll be asking in a job interview because I'm looking at the job description. Obviously, you should know about firewalls, VPNs. You should know about malware analysis. I mean, I'm not I'm not a malware analysis expert. I would probably look at John Hammond. He has some really good information about that. Obviously, um, Splunk is listed there. So like, I would probably sign up for Splunk and look at Splunk and look at that stuff, if that makes sense. Try to, try to watch some videos on Splunk. Splunk does have free training. And what else is, what else does it say here? Uh, work closely. To document your findings, yeah, and, and you know how to talk to stakeholders, including technical and executive summaries. So obviously, you're going to be talking to people that are, are not technical at all. So you have to know how to break that down on a non-tech way. So those things are very important. But yeah, that's it for me. Like for this video, I want to make this video super long, but these are like some things that you'll probably be asked. But like, what's a sim? What's an EDR? Uh, have you ever used a source solution um, for automation? You know, source is like an AI tool. Um, obviously helps you with, you know, handling and automating certain tasks. Uh, it gets smarter over time, uh, things like that. So hopefully this video helps you out if you're watching this video. So obviously you should know about the MITRE, the MITRE framework, uh, the MITRE attack framework, and you should know about uh, what are CVEs, in cyber vulnerability, exportation, things like that. Um, those things are very important as well. And then, you know, obviously like the latest trends of CVEs and how do you stay up to date with technology, things like that. With that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Hopefully this helps you out. Take care.